Hello, everybody. This is Kenton Taylor Howard, and today I'm going to review a quick way of moving objects back and forth in Unity. Uh, there are multiple ways that you can accomplish this depending on how you're trying to move the object and what you'd like to do with it. But I'm going to focus on one today that's pretty simple in terms of setting it up and editing it if you decide that you want to make some changes to it or something like that. Uh, I've done a little bit of setup before I started this video just to save some time. Um, what I've done is first created a 3D Unity project. The reason I've done that is I'm going to show you some sample code from the Unity website and it uses the 3D version of Unity, but everything I'm showing you here today works perfectly fine in the 2D version of Unity as well. Um, what I've done in this project is created a plane and I did that by just going up to the game object menu, going to 3D object and adding a plane to the uh, game. What I've also done is made the size of that plane on the x-axis five units. So I've gone over to the scale and the transform under the inspector and turn that up to five just so we have some space to move our cube across. The other thing I've done is created a cube. So I uh, went up to game object, created a 3D object and added a cube to the scene as well. And the only thing I've done with this cube other than create it is I moved it up 0.5 units on the y-axis. So I moved its transform position to 0.5 y. And the reason I did that is so that my cube is not like stuck inside of the plane and it'll be able to move back and forth correctly. That's the only setup that uh, I've done before the video started and that's the only real setup you need to do before you start coding. So I wanted to kind of jump directly into talking about the code to get this object to move back and forth. Uh, there's a couple functions from Unity that will help you do this. Um, the first of them is a function called vector3.lerp that I've got pulled up here on the screen. You can easily find it by searching it in the Unity documentation. And the reason why I'm using this example is because Unity provides a pretty good chunk of sample code that you can um, look at to get an understanding of how this function works. We won't worry about what lerping is at the moment. It's a math concept that's a bit too lengthy to explain in this video. But you can take a look at the code that they've posted and maybe potentially get a basic idea of what this code is trying to do. And basically what it does is moves an object from a starting position to an ending position. So we have two markers that we're going to use as our starting position markers and ending position markers. And then we tell Unity what speed we want to move that object at. And we start at the start and move it to the finish. That's essentially what the script does. Um, that's a really useful tool if you want to move objects in space. But on the first challenge assignment in this course, you are actually required to move objects back and forth. So you need to be able to move it to an ending position and then find a way to get it back to the starting position again. There are multiple ways that you could accomplish that as well. Um, but the one I'm going to show you today uses a script called mathfpingpong. And this script basically is designed to bounce a number back and forth between two values. And you can use this in conjunction with the vector3 lerp script to basically move an object back and forth. And what I've done in our web courses shell is posted some code that I'm going to use in this demonstration video that does just that. Basically, I've included mathf ping pong in the default code that Unity provides on its website and just rewritten the code slightly so that instead of moving from the start marker to the end marker, this object will instead move from the start to the end and then go back again afterwards. So, so what I'm going to do is grab this code from the web courses shell and I'm going to create a new C Sharp script. We're going to call it Box Mover. And to make sure it's attached to the cube, because obviously we're going to be using it on the cube. So once I've created the script, I'm just going to go ahead and open it up in Visual Studio so I can edit it. And essentially what I'm going to do is just get rid of everything here and cut and paste in my new code. Now it looks like we're probably missing a curly bracket up here, so you might want to pay attention to this. I'm also cut and pasting it under the, um, the content that says using Unity Endin, using system collections, stuff like that. So you might want to make sure that you've done that as well. So once our curly bracket's back in, everything is looking nice and working properly. We're going to need one more curly bracket, it looks like, to probably close this. So let's make sure that we've got that too. And it looks like we've written all the code that we're going to need. So we're going to go ahead and save this. 
and jump back over to Unity. So now that we're back into Unity, we can see a couple new things have showed up on our box. So if we highlight our cube and take a look at it in the inspector, we have three new properties that are coming from that box mover script. First, we've got a start marker and an end marker, and then we've got speed. So we've got a value for how quickly we want to move our box. Speed is relatively straightforward, and it's something you may have already played around in with in Unity if you've done some of the previous tutorials and challenges. So you might have an idea of how moving something using a speed property might work. And this is going to work very similarly to how it works in the UFO tutorial to move an object around. So we can set the value of the speed here in Unity to a value that we think is going to be reasonable. I'm going to set it to 5 because that seems like a reasonable number, and if that doesn't work, we can just play with it later. The more important thing we've got here is these two boxes that say start marker and end marker, and you'll notice that both of them have this little transform in parentheses next to them. What that's telling you is that these are actually variables that we created in our code. If we jump back to our code for a second and take a look, we have public uh, transform start marker, public transform end marker. Those are variables that we actually created to hold the transport transform position of an object in Unity. So basically what we're going to do is create some objects in Unity that will act as our start and end markers for this box. And then Unity is just going to be able to know that this is where the box is supposed to start and this is where the box is supposed to end. And that allows us to really quickly reposition the box if we want to. So we can just move those into different positions if we need to do that. So, uh, so what we're going to do is create two empty game objects. An empty game object in Unity is just kind of like an invisible object. So the player can't see it. It doesn't act in the physics system. You can't run into it or anything like that. But we can use it for something like holding the starting position and ending position of an object. So we're going to create an empty game object. We're going to create a second one. We're going to name them maybe start position and end position or start and end, something like that. And then we need to decide where we want these to be. Because right now they're just sitting at the origin, 0, 0, 0. And that's probably not where we want to start and end our cube. So what we're going to do is maybe, let's say, put the starting position at 5 on the x-axis. And we might also want to move it up to 0 0.5 on the y-axis so that our cube doesn't get stuck in the ground when it starts. And we're going to take our end and do negative 5. So the other side, basically, of our plane. And once again, we'll move it up to 0 0.5, so. so we can be sure that it's in a reasonable position. The last thing we need to do is link those game objects to our script. So we've got these ho uh, placeholders here that say start marker and end marker, and you'll notice they say none right now. What we need to do is actually drag the game objects that we created into those placeholders so that the game knows which ones that it's supposed to be using as the start and end markers. So we're going to drag start into start. I'm going to grab end. Oops, we need our cube selected and drag that over to the end marker. And now we have a start and end. So let's hit play and see what happens. And here's our cube bouncing back and forth. So we could obviously edit the functions of that pretty quickly if we want to. Like if we want to make it move quicker, we can pop that up to 10. And if we want to, say, maybe move our start and end markers to different spots, let's say, like, maybe we'll move this over to 10 on the x-axis. We'll move this one over to 10 on the y-axis, or the x-axis, negative 10, sorry. And then let's hit play and see what happens this time. So we have it moving back and forth again, and it's moving faster now. So the reason why I'm showing you this method is that it's a nice, quick, and easy way that you can set up a moving object in Unity and edit it later really quickly. There's a few other ways that you could accomplish this in code, like perhaps actually hard coding that start and end position into your code, like writing in specifically in your code where those are going to be. The problem with that is every single time you want to change the start and end position of an object, you have to go rewrite all your code. So this method works really nicely because you can do most of the editing inside of Unity once you've got the code set up. So I hope this is useful to you. Again, all of this content will work inside of the 2D version of Unity. The only thing you'll have to keep in mind is all those vector 3.lerp functions are going to have to get changed over to vector 2.lerps to make sure that they work in 2D space. 
But other than that, this should work perfectly fine if, for example, you're working on your UFO challenge and you want to move an object back and forth. So I hope that this was helpful and have a good day.